This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. We are live downtown, thousands getting ready for a major concert at the American Legion Mall, but the major concern is the heat. I'm Rafael Sanchez, a live report coming up next from downtown Indianapolis. I'm Call 6 Investigates Kara Kenny with details on a phone scam that could empty your bank account. Next at 6, what a local business wants you to know. I'm Nicole Griffin tonight in downtown Noblesville where there is some confusion and frustration about parking. I'll explain what you need to know coming up. Good evening and welcome in here. We begin now at six with day two of the heat wave. Fans, ice cream cones, water, anything to help alleviate some of the sting of the oppressive heat gripping Indiana. Once again, it feels like triple digits. It's the type of heat that can quickly become very dangerous if you don't take precautions and play it safe. We have team coverage for you tonight, starting with RTV6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. Kevin. And if you're counting, it's the 13th time we've been over 90 degrees this summer. And of course, our recent jump into the 90s is accompanied by unusually humid conditions. And that's why that heat and uh, temperature combination has the excessive heat warning. 91, we've backed off the high today uh, in the low 90s. That wind out of the southwest at 15, the humidity is still sky high. The wind will stay out of the southwest and generally calm down a bit, but at least we have a breeze. That helps a little bit. There are your current heat index values. 103 in Peru and Muncie, 100 for Indianapolis. Another 24 to 36 hours of uncomfortable heat. Then we'll make a change. Temperatures all in the 90s in central Indiana. A little warmer as you get west of the Mississippi. So tomorrow still has the potential to be our warmest day. Then we'll make a change. 96 tomorrow with 107 heat index. And then you see as thunderstorms arrive will be a cooler on Sunday and noticeably cooler, more refreshing on Monday. And we continue our team coverage now live on the American Legion Mall where people are settling in for a hot night of music under the stars at the Black Expo Music Heritage Concert. RTV6's Rafael Sanchez is there tonight. Rafael. Hey Mark, it is so hot on the American Legion Mall that Dominique from Indianapolis has brought her own battery-operated fan to keep cool on this very hot day. Dominique, is it working considering the humidity out here is just deep? Yes, the humidity is deep, but the fan does help. Um, I come here every year and I come to have a very good time, so I needed my fan to keep cool. Well, listen, if you're out of batteries, we have some in the live truck, so come talk to me. We got this? Because I want to show you you're okay tonight. Listen, the American Legion Mall, one of the most beautiful scenic areas in downtown Indianapolis. This is where thousands of people will gather for what? Music. Music is the attraction mark, but the heat is the distraction. Let me show you what's happening here throughout the mall area. People are doing their best on this day to keep cool. They have bottled water, as you saw from Dominique, their own battery-powered vans. There are also misting stations here, as well as people just doing the best they can to find some shade. Now, for emergency medical services, they're concerned about this heat wave. They have a number of medics on the scene. They've also deployed extra people. Two Indigo buses have been sent as cooling stations, and as we we see in the Indianapolis 500, there are a number of those misting fans hoping to keep cool, people cool on a night like tonight. Well, it's hot, but it's worth it. We're surrounded by friends, family. It's worth it. So I'm enjoying the experience. And you have a beautiful fan. Thank you. Yeah, don't you think so? <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, you can keep fanning me. Go ahead. Yes. Thank and you. it works, too. It works. She is a great fanner. <laughs> I've adjusted to the heat. Uh, I've been coming out daily for the, about the last week, and so I'm, you know, I was out earlier today, so the heat, I'm sitting in the shade. I feel pretty good. I got a cool towel on also. Of course, so we did have a minor medical issue here. Uh, EMS was able to respond. The person did not need medical attention, but they're keeping an eye on this, and that's because, Mark, on average, on a day like today, they expect about three calls for heat-related incidents. Yesterday, they hit a peak of six calls citywide. The numbers today could be somewhat significant, so we'll have to wait till tomorrow to see what happens. Tonight, it's all about music fans having their fans. No, keep fanning, ma'am. You're doing fine. That's a perfect way. Music fans fanning themselves and getting ready for the concert mark that'll begin any minute now. We are live in downtown Indianapolis. Rafael Sanchez with all the music fans.
now back to you. You need Ladies, a big fan good. like that, Raphael. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Keep cool out there. It's all kinds of uh, scams out there anymore, and, and you don't know what's real, what's not. A West Side business manager has a warning tonight about a phone scam that can empty your bank account. Call 6 Investigates' Kara Kenny joining us live with how this scam works. Kara. When you get a phone call, you cannot trust the number that's on the caller ID. That's because scammers are spoofing the numbers to make it appear that it's coming from a local business, even the power company. Here's how you can spot a fake. Davis Jean and Fashion. John Ward is a manager at Davis Jean and Fashion on West Washington Street. They sell a lot of jeans and get a lot of phone calls. Looked at the phone, we have caller ID, it said IPL and had a local 317 phone number on it. I answered and she said, is the owner here? I said, I'm the manager, could I help you? And she said, yes, this is IPL, we've not received payment. We're going to shut your power off at the end of the day if we have not received payment. It's a sophisticated scam and appears totally legitimate. This is the real number for Indianapolis Power and Light. And I said, well, let me stop you there. We got this call a couple months ago. I called IPL. IPL said, no, we do not call customers to tell them we're going to shut their power off. And then uh, click, she just hung up on me. So John didn't fall for it, but many others do, including homeowners and other business owners. It's called the utility imposter scam, where the scammers spoof the real phone numbers of power companies like Duke Energy and IPL and demand payment or they'll shut off your electricity. Often times they'll ask you to use a prepaid debit card, Bitcoin, or even wire money. It's just amazing really what's happening these days. You know, there's just all kinds of uh, scams out there anymore and, it, and you don't know what's real, what's not. We're working for you to make sure you don't get scammed. IPL says if they do call a customer, a representative will have specific and accurate information about your accounts. They do not require certain types of payment, so be on high alert if the caller demands you use a prepaid debit card or demands you pay a specific way. When in doubt, hang up and call IPL at 317-261-8222 to verify questions about your account. The utility says they are working with authorities to stop these types of calls. In the meantime, be cautious about giving out personal information over the phone. Just take precautions and, and uh, just be careful. Both IPL and Duke Energy are asking you to call police if you get one of these scam calls. IMPD says they are seeing an uptick in complaints and they asked us to spread the word. Mark, back to you. Our Kara Kenny reporting for us live tonight. Thank you, Kara. New at six, a Logansport woman is arrested for impaired driving in a crash that left the Howard County Sheriff's daughter dead. State police say Jennifer Eastwood had a blood alcohol concentration of 0.196 the night of the April crash. That's more than twice the legal limit. 21-year-old Jordan Asher died in the crash on April 8th after police say Asher crossed the center line, causing a head-on crash. Police say Asher had THC in her system, the active ingredient in marijuana. Eastwood will appear in court on August 5th. Eastwood is charged with operating a vehicle while intoxicated and driving with a suspended license with a prior conviction. Tonight, drivers who work and visit downtown Noblesville are confused and frustrated about parking rules. It comes after seeing a new parking enforcement vehicle and several drivers getting tickets into two-hour parking spots. RTV6's Nicole Griffin is working for you, getting answers from the city about what drivers need to know. If you're planning to head downtown to the courthouse in Noblesville or you're just grabbing a bite to eat or doing a little shopping and you're parked in a spot like this one here, you only get two hours. And some people I'm hearing from say that is not long enough. If you're not out in two hours, you get a ticket. If you're there for four hours, that's two tickets. Susie Swain works at Sid's Bar and Grill in downtown Noblesville. I avoid driving completely downtown. I don't. I Uber to work because, you know, in one year I got like 10 tickets. She says the two-hour parking options around the square where she works are not realistic for her to use and do not allow customers to stay downtown very long. People don't know how long it's going to take to get waited on in a restaurant or to it, it, enjoy our downtown 
businesses. It hurts us. During the week between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., drivers are allowed two free hours of parking, not two hours per spot. New technology in the city's new parking enforcement vehicle reads license plates and aims to eliminate jumpers. This means drivers who move their vehicle to a free two-hour spot every two hours. It is confusing to a lot of people. The city of Noblesville says the purpose of the free two-hour parking is to allow customers easier access to businesses. By capping it at two hours, it means that these spaces have a higher turnover. There are places to park. Uh, Mayor Dixler's done a nice job of trying to provide parking. They're further away. That is a challenge the city faces, getting people to understand there are public parking lots available that require a few minutes of walking. A new parking garage is also being built downtown. Nicole Griffin, RTV6. Noblesville city officials are looking at the ordinance now, along with parking enforcement, to bring the city up to more modern practices and procedures. The last time the downtown parking ordinance was updated was 30 years ago, which set the rules for the two-hour free parking parking, prohibited spot jumping, and 25 cent meters downtown. It's a change that could really help your local shelters plan ahead. Indianapolis Animal Care and Control is asking you to schedule an appointment if you need to surrender an animal. In the last week, IECS has taken in more than 400 animals, leading to crowding at shelters. Making an appointment to surrender is not required, but IACS says it can drastically cut down on your wait time. To make an appointment, we posted details in this story on the RTV6 app. And to help clear the shelter, there will be a free adoption event tomorrow at IECS. IACS, no donation necessary. Still ahead here on RTV6 News at six second changes and removing the barriers to employment. The program that's helping those who have made bad decisions in the past still have a chance at a profitable future. And I'm Dave First at Iowa Speedway. Temperatures way over 90 degrees. Heat index at 110. That's not the hottest thing going on here in Newton, Iowa this weekend. We'll tell you about it coming up here on RTV6. Doesn't that all sound familiar? Temperatures peak tomorrow well into the 90s, but look, a big change is on the way. Something happens in between, and then I'll also explain why I have a spatula in my coat pocket. You'll want to find out. And it should be. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. RTV6 is hiring Hoosiers, works to make sure everyone who wants a job has the means to find one. Tonight, we want you to meet Latuan Jackson. He's come a long way since he made a series of bad decisions and committed a serious crime, attempted murder. He's now a prep cook at a downtown Indianapolis hotel and took culinary classes at Ivy Tech. It wasn't long after his release from prison in 2017 that Latuan learned about CareSource. CareSource is a nonprofit health insurer providing health care coverage for Medicaid consumers. But there is more to it, including its life services and reentry program, which helps convicts transition into society. That life coach will sit down with the member and determine what education and employment goals um, they have and help sort of develop a roadmap to get to those goals. She helped me with my resume. She helped me get my tools that my financial aid wouldn't cover for school because I just completed a semester at Ivy Tech. Uh, and on a consistent basis, she helps me sort through the things that like technology. It's overwhelming at times. The Care Source Reentry Program has helped more than 1,500 ex offenders, partnering with schools and more than 160 local employers who have made a commitment to hire Care Source members. You can learn more about the program at hiringhoosiers.com. Indiana's unemployment rate dropped a bit in June. It stands at 3.5%, down from 3.6% in May. It's also lower than the national rate. Private sector employment grew by 6,800 over the previous month. Private educational and health services saw the biggest gains, 5,000 employees. Well, some animals are made for this kind of heat, but not all the residents at the Indianapolis Zoo were born for a 100 degree heat index. That's why zookeepers are working to keep animals from getting too hot this week. Some of the animals, like cheetahs, which hail from Africa, apparently don't mind this weather. But zookeepers still take precautions for all animals in the zoo. 
that we make sure they have enough water on exhibit throughout the day while they're out there. And then we make sure that they have shade um, in case they get too hot in the sun. And then we also offer them things like ice treats um, throughout the day to help keep them cool. The animals got three varieties of ice treats today, regular ice, goat's milk, and blood. Yeah, don't worry, they like it. Well, on Monument Circle today, ice cream helped people beat the heat. The American Dairy Association of Indiana hosted its 30th ice cream social on the circle. Giant Sundays with all the toppings went for $3. They raised $5,700 for Second Helpings. Second Helpings takes donated perishable and overstocked food and turns it into free meals for those in need. In this heat, it was a bit of a race to scoop and eat the ice cream before it melted. That's one treat. Do you know what goes great with ice cream? fresh baked cookies. Kevin did a little experiment. Yeah, so we had a little fun. The National Weather Service this morning has tried to bake um, muffins. Oh yeah, yeah. muffins. You usually see fried eggs yeah. sometimes. Bis biscuits, I guess, in, in a car. So I thought, all right, I'm going to join the big bake-off challenge. And I put chocolate chip and oatmeal cookies on my dashboard. <laughs> wow. And they did cook. It only took four or five hours. <laughs> but still, <laughs> but they're still, here. They did, and they're not only done, they're burnt. They're stuck to the uh, pan here. I'll show you as I just come out here. They're going nowhere. Uh, these are pretty much stuck here. Mark says he wants to try one. So I do. I'll, I would just nibble around the edges because <laughs> right. we need you here at 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> Let me just say this. If you remember 2012, you remember the heat. 100 on seven occasions. Actual air temperature. We hit 105 two days in a row. That was one away from our all-time high temperature in Indianapolis, which was 106 degrees. Dry tomorrow, there's the change. On Sunday, our thunderstorm chance will go up, temperatures begin to come down, and that sets the stage for what will be a far more comfortable uh, week. Mark said he would try the cookies. He has not tried them. <laughs> you know, I'm not pressuring you. During the afternoon hours on Sunday, the thunderstorms start to develop. There we are by 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, 9 to 11 still ongoing. What happens sometimes in these situations is we actually end up slowing down the arrival of the rain as it tries to break down this ridge of high pressure and the heat. Te warmest temperatures tomorrow. We back off Sunday and then noticeably cooler, more refreshing as we get to early next week. That includes low temperatures. If you're just hoping to be able to open your windows, let refreshing air back in, you'll be able to do that, I think, as we get to Tuesday of next week with that low humidity. Right now, it's all about this combination of heat and humidity, triple digit heat index values. Temperatures will change very little as we go through the next several hours. We'll still be above 80 degrees at 8 o'clock tonight. And by noon tomorrow, Tomorrow, we're back to 90, should be around 95 degrees for the afternoon high, and that's north to south. The only thing that helps us, we get a little breeze, and we'll see a mixture of clouds and sunshine. The cumulus clouds will help us uh, from getting too carried away. On Sunday, with the thunderstorms, there is marginal or low risk for severe storms along the cold front that will generate the thunderstorms, and it will also deliver the cooler temperatures. Not for Sunday, necessarily. The rain will knock the temperatures down a little bit, but it's, it will be felt as we get to Monday, then Tuesday and Wednesday, a couple spectacular days. I'll let you apply any adjective you want to the outlook here as we go into the middle of next week. Most comfortable overnight temperatures and very comfortable afternoon readings. You did good. Would you be able to tell that they were baked in a car? Not at all. So this whole weather thing doesn't work out. You got a second <laughs> second option. Kevin's here. cookies. Right, exactly. <laughs> hey, we have to get Brad one. Brad probably wants a cookie. He's here with sports. And good evening, everyone. IndyCar's season is considered among the most challenging in all of racing because of the variety of tracks on the schedule. The most unique of those could be this weekend's trip to Iowa Speedway. Just seven-eighths of a mile around, laps being turned in 12 to 13 seconds. They'll race under the lights tomorrow night, qualifying this afternoon. Dave First has this recap. I feel like we were just in Toronto. Oh, wait a minute. We were just in Toronto. Oh, yeah. In the same scenario, a pole position, maybe another win come tomorrow night here at Iowa Speedway. You'll take that, right? Oh, yeah, but uh, one step at a time. You know, yeah. I, um, it's been working for me. I've been in the moment all season long, and uh, right now I'm really hitting my stride. So, um, you know, I'm one day at a time. Tomorrow we're going into the race. <laughs> Tonight, actually, I've got to switch my mind. We're going to race mode. This morning, the car felt really good in race conditions. So, um, please, we could get another pole. It's, at this point of the season, it's important to get any points you can get and also show the uh, authority. So, um, 
I'm right here and I'm going to be aggressive. Championship point here today is pretty key. When you're watching someone like your teammate going out there last to try to bump you from pole, how nerve-wracking can that be? Uh, well, the whole qualifying is nerve-wracking because it's so hot. It's 135 degrees on the tarmac and... Uh, you know, those extreme conditions really change the, the car's behavior. So uh, you don't really know what you're gonna get, right. um, and, and you gotta do it. You gotta go out there and and, and do it. So um, uh, testament to my team Penske uh, and the three the three teams doing such a great job working together. One, two, three on the grid just shows the speed we have. Now we're gonna convert that into uh, consistency for race run. It is hot. The heat index here is like 110 degrees. Have you ever experienced anything like this? Maybe Texas Motor Speedway, but man, yeah, it's hot. Houston, yeah, Houston. I think it was one year in yeah. Houston. Uh, 2014, it was just like hard. Cart days, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, actually, IndyCar 2014. Oh, that's so, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, that's what we prepare for. It's good not to be in a fire suit. Oh, look, here's the boss, Tim Sindri. Congratulations. Good luck tomorrow, guys. Big day. Simon Pagano at the pole, third this season. We talk about the variety of tracks. Look at what's left on the IndyCar schedule after Iowa. Next weekend, it's the winding road course at Mid Ohio. Then they've got the massive triangle at Pocono. Gateway, another short oval, Portland, a street course, and the season finale at Laguna Seca will decide the championship. Joseph Newgarden enters tomorrow night's race as the points leader. The Fever are home tonight. It's the last of four straight games at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. 7 o'clock tip against Washington. Fever play at Chicago on Sunday. They'll then travel to Phoenix for a Tuesday night matchup. The Indians are also home tonight. The start of a three-game series against the Durham Bulls. Indy came up with a win last night. Evansville's Hunter Owen hitting his first Triple-A home run in that one. It's a 7-15 start tonight. They'll have fireworks after the game. 7:05 tomorrow and a 1:35 game on Sunday to wrap it up. Don't forget that bottled water policy. If you're going to Victory Field for one of those, you could carry one in to stay hydrated in this heat. Have a great weekend, everyone. We're back to wrap up this edition of the News at 6 after one more break. I thank you for sending in your dog pictures, and I figuratively take them for a walk. But Trinket and Nugget haven't figured out. Just sit in the chair, <laughs> stay in the shade, relax. It relax. It's yeah. 90 at 7, 84 still at 11 o'clock. Turns out the cookies were pretty good. It only took four hours instead of 12 minutes Delicious. to cook them in the car. That's right. <laughs> That'll do it for us here at 6. Raphael's back with you for RTV 6 News at 7 o'clock.